Alrighty. Welcome back to Ink Transfer Drawing with Mark Zimmerman. I am Mark, your visiting artist here, virtually with you today. Because of the work of the good folks at Sanford Arts. You just saw me finishing putting a coat of thin, thin layer of ink on a piece of plexiglass. I'm going to put a piece of paper down over that ink. And tape it down so it can't move on me. If it moves, I kind of get smudges because it is face down on top of ink. And what I'm going to do to get a transfer drawing, ink transfer drawing, is to draw or rub on the back of this paper. We've got some little nasty things on there. Blow those on the floor. Um, I need to know where the ink is. It's inside a rectangle of tape and I can push this pen into that corner, feel that corner, feel the edge, and drag my pen along the edge of that tape. So I know my ink is inside this rectangle. Had a little trouble in the corner. That happens sometimes. Oh. So, kind of been doing, I just did what I think of as a potted palm. And I'm going to do another one. Stem. Stem. Great big old leaves. It's a very simple drawing. But there's my potted palm. I think I do want something, and I want it straight, straight too. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to use a straight edge. Pick a line where I like. going to be my one accent here. There we go. I think I want an accent at the bottom too. Uh, about right there. And I'm going to do it at just a touch of an angle. Just to mess with people. <laughs> Make them think it's close, but not quite. Okay. I'm going to darken. The shapes that stick out. So darkening, darkening just means putting a little pressure on the back of the paper, in this case with the pen. You'll notice that I can't, or I don't, set my hand down. In the image area. Because if I did, that would transfer ink. The weight of my hand would transfer ink. And I have a hard time on that side, so I'm just going to turn it around and draw upside down for a little bit. I 
So I'm making a very, very dark mark. The pen is a very focused pressure point, so it, or what it is per square inch, but it's enough to transfer a lot of ink on the underside on the front. side up again. So there's some shapes that I want dark but not quite that dark. I think I just hit the tripod. Did the camera shake a little bit? Um, so dark but not as dark as that. So just the pressure of my finger. This very obviously is an abstraction of a potted palm. If I were going to do more than draw the idea of a potted palm, I'd have to have a potted palm to look at. I don't have a great idea in my head what it looks like. Get my pinky out because I can sneak it in those little corners. Get my fat finger out. That covers more ground. Let's see, I haven't done these two, have I? I can sneak a peek and see if I missed anything, so I would have caught it. But I think I haven't done this one either. And then I wanted a little visual weight at the bottom and get this dark too. Let's sneak a peek, see what we have. See what we might want to do. So I'll just take one tape off. It lets me lift this up. Yeah, we're good. That's about what I was after. I'm going to get the ink out of here and splash a little watercolor paint on that. Get the ink over here. And I know that I'm going to want to do a wash basically. So I'm going to be able to turn this around and I think I know where I'm going to start my wash. my big brush out. I'm going to start it right here. And I can tip it. And that lets, uh, lets gravity work for me. So it's running downhill. All i got to do is invite it to come where I want it to go. And... Tip it a different direction, let gravity bring it down this way. Add some water, that will make it lighter. Watercolor is transparent and so a lot of watercolor paper painters don't use white at all. They just use the white paper and by making your paint more transparent with water, you uh, You get a lighter 
color. Lighter value color. Same color, different value. Let's tip it a new direction. Let gravity work in this direction too. Before it dries too much, I'm going to soften that edge. back to the wash I'm working on. So I used that little narrow area there to kind of create a little spot where I could pinch that where it's kind of a pinch point so I have a narrow area to have essentially a seam where one wash, where the end of the wash meets the beginning of the wash. Let's see what color I have here. That should work. It is a potted palm. I need some green. There's a pinch point. I'm going to use that to my advantage. Another pinch point. I'm going to use it to my advantage again. Keep those washes moving so I don't get a reticulation line where it paused for a minute. Again, I'm using gravity to pull this paint down in the direction I want to go. Give it a little rinse. Okay. Rinse the brush good. I'm done with that. And let's come back with contrasting color. I want to Use the direct complement, the exact opposite color from green, just to kind of make this a little bolder. So red and green are opposites. Direct complements. And I'm going to use a direct complement with from blue to the exact opposite color, the color exactly opposite blue on a color wheel is orange. So I'm going to sneak some orange in here too. Let's turn it upside down. No, let's turn it right side up for you. Let's turn it sideways.
Mm. Mess with that a little bit. Other than that, I kind of like everything that's happening. Except this red is a little much. It was already dark from the ink. So I'm going to pick some of that up and let that ink show through a little more. There we go. The other thing I think I want to do just a little bit of bit of yellowy green just in places. So I'm gonna come back. With a little yellow. that brush get a different blue this time I've been using turquoise in that around the outside I'm gonna take a phthalo that's probably too much that looks about right there Let's see what I can do about getting rid of some of that paint. So I just dry my brush off. Dry it again. I was thinking I was going to like this, but I don't. So I think I want it to be just like that red at the bottom. So I'm going to come back and You might as well look at what's happening right side up. Huh? Whoa! Got a bleed into the blue, which actually I think I kind of like. Bob Ross was around, we'd call that a happy accident. Someday I'm going to sit down and watch an episode of Bob Ross, see what he does. Again, too much red. It's easier to put down too much and take it off than it is to spread it without much paint. Little bits of paint don't spread very well. So 
So, come back and pick that up. Someday I'm going to be able to afford a clean Kleenex. <laughs> Maybe later today. There we go. That I like. So they're always signed. At least I always sign them in pencil. We'll call this Palm and Window Sign It. And date it 2020. And if you like abstractions of potted palms and you'd like to take this home, they are free. You can help yourself. And you can watch the uh, video of its creation too. So I hope you watched the video. I hope you like it. I hope you had fun. I enjoyed myself. So uh, until next time, bye bye.